The content from this video is found from videos on the Electrical Code Coaches YouTube channel. Be sure to check out his channel as well as his videos. This will be a remake on the information found in his videos. I'll do my best to include everything that he did in his videos as well as try to explain some things that I think might need some explaining. So be sure to check out his original videos on the same topics. The link will be in the description. Welcome to this video all about sizing junction boxes. You're going to need your NEC codebook for this and you're going to want to go to table 314.16a and 314.16b. You'll see A says metal boxes and B is the volume allowance. This is required per conductor. Okay, if you don't know how to do this, if you aren't familiar with this, it will explain itself as we get to it. All right, now we're gonna see this is pretty simple. The questions will explain the topic and like always, it's gonna start off simple and then they're gonna get more complex. So looking at this first one here, what size round slash octagonal box fits nine number 12 conductors? We're going to go over to table 314.16a and we'll see at the top three main columns, the box trade size, the minimum volume, and the maximum number of conductors. We see in the box trade size, the round slash octagonal along with square, device, and masonry box slash gang, as well as some different sized cover plates that actually do add a depth. Okay, but we're just thinking about sizing junction boxes in this one. We could always add the information from certain things like adding the faceplate to it. Okay, so we know we're looking for the round slash octagonal box and we want nine number 12. So we see it's arranged by AWG and we want nine number 12 conductors. Okay, so we see where it says maximum number of conductors it is arranged by AWG size. So we see 18 to six. So that's very convenient there. And of course we're looking for nine number 12 conductors. And we do see under 12, the number nine for conductors next to the round slash octagonal box. And we see next to that, it says four by two and one eighth. Okay, so we need to understand this is giving us the volume. So if we only have two numbers, that's gonna tell us the first numbers missing. So in this case, if we have a four by two and an eighth inch, that's telling us our box is really a four by four by two and an eighth inch. Okay, and then if we do look on this table, we do see some of them do include three numbers and some of them only include the two. So this rule applies for all of them that only have the two. The first number is gonna be doubled and that's gonna give you the actual volume of this junction box and that's it that's the answer we can fit nine number 12 conductors in a four by four by two and an eighth inch round slash octagonal box next what size round slash octagonal box fits seven number 14 conductors okay we're looking again at round octagonal this time number 14 we do see the number seven and we see that is a four by one and a half inch. Just like before, that tells us the first number is going to be doubled. So we have a four by four by one and a half inch box that can fit the seven number 14 conductors when it is a round slash octagonal box. Okay, next, what size four square fits eight number eight conductors? So when it says four square, it's talking about a square box that's going to be four by four in those first dimensions. That's why it's going to be called a four square. So we are not going to be looking at the four and 11 16th by four and 11 16th square boxes. We're only gonna be looking at those four by four. We want eight number eight conductors and we see the number seven and we see the number 10. So obviously we're gonna go up to 10 and we see that is a four by two and eighth inch square box. Okay, so there's our answer for that one. And we can see it's good to know this because if we didn't know this, we might look at square boxes and see eight number eight under the first four and 11 16th, which is by the one and a quarter inch. But in fact, that's not going to be a four square box. Okay, so this kind of ties in some of the, I guess, slang that you'll see sometimes on the job. And you'll see some of these questions do tie in some of the terms that you're probably going to know from working the job and then they actually tie it into logical things here like a four square it's four by four and although that's pretty common knowledge now you know that's not going to include the four and 11 16th inch and you don't have to think twice about it it's really good to know things and not just assume that the thing is the correct answer that's where you slip up and i promise these will get more complex 
Next question, how many number 10 conductors fit in a 4 and 11 16th by one and a half inch square box. And using the same train of thought, the same method, we're going over that maximum number of conductor part of the table. Of course, next to the square box in the four and 11 16th by one and a half inch, we see under number 10, the number 11, which tells us 11 conductors. And that is our final answer. We can fit 11 number 10 conductors in the four and 11 16th by one and a half inch square box. So we're doing this over and over to instill this in our mind to say, okay, so if we have a certain size conductor and it's all the same size conductor, how many of those can we fit in a square box? And we see plain and simply, we have it already mathed out for us here in this table. You could compare this similarly to like when you have Annex C instead of using Chapter 9, Table 5, and then using Chapter 9, Table 4 to figure out your conduit fill. So just like that, this serves as an efficient method. So remember that when you know the gauge of your wire and you know the size of the box, the table will already tell you how many of that certain size of conductor will fit in that certain size box. And this will come in handy for some other things as well. Okay, next, how many number eight conductors fit in a four by two and an eighth by one and a half inch device box? Okay, we're going back to table 314.16a. We see where it says device. And of course, we're looking for this number. Okay, and we're looking for that four times two and an eighth times one and a half. And then we're going to go over where it says number eight. And we see it says we can fit three number eight in this device box. Okay, the next one, switching it up. We're looking for the max cubic inches of a three and three quarter by two by two and a half inch masonry box. And we find that next to the masonry box slash gang. And we see it states the minimum volume. We do see 14 cubic inches. Now it's a little interesting because this is actually the maximum amount of space that we have in this box. Okay, so remember if they ask you the maximum amount in a box and here you are in table 314.16a you're going to be looking under where it says the minimum volume okay so don't let that fool you okay next one what is the maximum cubic inches of a 4 and 11 16 by one and a half inch square box okay we're finding that size under square box it's like gives us 29.5 cubic inches we didn't have to do any math we just had to look at the table so that's another very useful aspect of this table here okay next how many more number 10 conductors fit in a 4 and 11 16 by one and a half inch square box that already has six number 10 conductors inside of it okay and this is where we are going to use this table 314.16b because when we're sizing these metal boxes we're going to use the volume that it gives to us in this table okay we see it's pretty general here we're working with different gauges of wire and that tells us the cubic inches. Unlike when we're sizing conductors for let's say conduit fill, wireway fill, and gutter fill, where we're using chapter nine, table five, where we have certain types of conductors as well as the certain gauge. Here's more general, we're actually just working with the certain gauge. It doesn't even tell us if we have aluminum, if we have copper, it's just okay, what gauge of wire do we have? And what is the cubic inch for that? Which if we see that it's under what tells us the free space within box for each conductor. So all we got to do is use the numbers in this table, as well as the table above it, the 314.16a. And we're not going to have to do a bunch of complicated math. Okay, so first we want to find out the size for the number 10 conductor. We do see it says 2.5 cubic inches. Okay, and since we have six of those, we're going to get the 2.5 and we're going to multiply that by six. Okay, but before I pull out my calculator, I'm going to look at the size for this 4 and 11 16 by one and a half inch box. Of course, this mentions it is a square box. So I'm going to find that size under square and I'm going to see 29.5 cubic inches. Okay, so now I'm going to do the 2.5 times 6 and I'm going to get 15. And of course, that's still cubic inches. So now because I already know that there are these six number 10 conductors, I need to subtract the space that these are taking up from the total space of the box. I'm going to do 29.5 minus 15. I'm going to get 14.5 cubic inches. Okay, now I know the space that I have left 
And now I just want to know how many more number 10 conductors can fit in there. So since I already know the size of that is the 2.5 cubic inches, I'm going to get my remaining space 14.5 and divide it by the 2.5, the size of the conductor that I want. This is going to tell me how many of those conductors I can fit in here. I have 5.8 and of course we're not going to use 0.8 of a conductor and we're not going to be rounding up here. So in fact we have 5 additional number 10 conductors that can fit in this 4 and 11 16 by 1 and a half inch square box that already has 6 number 10 conductors inside of it. And now this is good to know. This is going to help us for some questions later on. But we don't have to do it this way because we have the same size conductor. We have number 10 conductors. So we can act a little bit smarter here and not work as hard. So of course this would come in handy if let's say I was trying to fit a different size conductor in here. If let's say it said how many more number 12 conductors can I fit in here? Which might be an actual circumstance. So it's good to know that method there of how to get your leftover, in this case, volume, and then how to also take the volume of the wire, which it's giving us here, and figure out how many conductors we can fit in there. Okay, so that's very useful. But okay, let's make this easier for ourselves. We know that we have number 10 conductors. We know it's a square box, and it's 4 and 11 16th by 1 and a half inch. Okay, we do have the 29.5, and of course that's cubic inches, but that is irrelevant at the moment because all that we actually need to know is that we already have six number 10 conductors, and we want to fit an additional amount of the same type of conductor. All that we have to do is, in that column we're looking at, the 4 and 11 16 by 1 and a half inch square, all we have to do is look in that same column we're already at and go over to where it says 10 gauge. We see the number 11, so we know we can fit 11 conductors in here. And that's going to be a lot simpler, because now that we know we can fit 11 conductors in there, and we already have 6 conductors in there, we now know that we can fit 5 more conductors in here. Okay, so remember that you can make it a lot easier for yourself if you have the same size wire going in a junction box. You're already using table 314.16b to give you those cubic inches, and the table already tells you a number of how many conductors you can fit in a certain box, so make it easy for yourself. Like I mentioned before, knowing those cubic inches will come in handy if your box has two different size or two or more different size gauged wires inside of it. All right, next, how many more number 12 conductors fit in a four by two and an eighth by two and an eighth inch device box that already has five number 12 conductors inside of it? Okay, so we're looking at the same exact size of conductors and we know the size of the box. We also know it is a device box. So we're gonna go here in table 314.16a. We're gonna find that size in our device box. Make sure to pay attention to how it has two repeating numbers, but the first number is different than the second and the third. The second and the third are repeating. It's good to take note of little nuances like this while you're in a calm mindset. So when you go into a test and you might be more stressed, you already went through this in your head. Okay, so here we are. We're looking at 12 gauge conductors and we see it says we can have six of these conductors. Okay, so pretty simple. We can have six number 12 conductors in this box. We already have five. So we can have one more additional number 12 conductor in this device box. Next, we're looking at two different questions here. First, we want to know the cubic inch for one number six conductor. Okay, we're going to go here in table 314.16b this time, and we see the number six conductor is five cubic inches. Next, we want to know the cubic inches for a number 12 conductor. We're going back to the same table, 314.16b. We see a number 12 is 2.25, and of course, that is inches squared. Okay, next, we want to find the total cubic inch volume for four number 12 and three number 14 conductors. Okay, so we're simply going to have four times 2.25. The 2.25 is for the number 12 cubic inch rating given to us by table 314.16b. And then we have three times two. Two is for the number 14 gauge wire. So of course, always keep in mind we're talking about two cubic inches, 2.25 
cubic inches. Okay, so we could simply think four times two is eight, and then four times 0.25 is going to be one, eight plus one is going to be nine, or you can simply use your calculator, which I do recommend always using your calculator. Then we have three times two, which we obviously know that's gonna be six. So we have nine cubic inches and six cubic inches. We add them together and simply we get 15 cubic inches as the total cubic inches for our conductors here. Okay, next we wanna know the total cubic inch volume for three number 10 and five number eight gauge conductors. Okay, we're back at table 314.16b. We see 10 is 2.5 and we see eight is 3.0. So while we're looking at this, it's good to notice the jump in between the wires that correlate with the different cubic inches. Okay, so when we have 14, we have two, 12, 2.25, 10, we have 2.5. So we're just going up 0.25. We also see before this, the 16 and the 18 gauge, we're just going up 0.25 increments. But then when we go from 10 gauge to eight gauge, we see there is a 0.5 cubic inch gap there instead of the 0.25. Then when we go from eight gauge to six gauge, we see a two cubic inch gap. So quite a large gap there. Okay, so it's good to note that. Of course, you're probably gonna be looking at this table. But again, it's good to take note of these little things now while your brain is calm. Okay, so we get three times 2.5, we have 7.5. We take five times three, we get 15. 7.5 plus 15, and we get 22.5 cubic inches. Okay, next we wanna know the smallest device box for four number 12 and three number 14 gauge conductors. First, we're gonna find out the size for these conductors and the total cubic inches that they're taking up. For number 12, we have 2.25 cubic inches, and we have four of those. And then for number 14, we have two cubic inches, and we have three of those. Okay, we might recognize this now. We have four times 2.25, we have nine. Three times two, we have six. We add those together, we have the total cubic inches of 15 cubic inches. Okay, now we want to find the smallest device box. So we're going to table 314. We're looking at device box. And since we're looking at the smallest, we're looking from the top down. And do keep in mind that the first number of these boxes is in chronological order, but your other numbers will change. So you will have a difference in your volume. But okay, let's look. We're in device box. We're looking for anything that is 15 cubic inches or above. And the only thing we see is 18 inches for a three times two times three and a half inch box. And that is the smallest size device box that we can fit these conductors into. So the last one, we want to know the smallest round slash octagonal box for three number 10 and three number 12. Okay, so we have the number 10 is 2.5 and we have three of those. The 12 is 2.25 and we have three of those. Three times 2.5 equals seven. 0.5 three times 2.25 equals 6.75 add those together and we have 14.25 and that is our cubic inches that we are working with here with these conductors now we're going to keep this size in mind when we go to the table 314.16a and we look for the round slash octagonal box. We see in fact a 12.5 and then 15.5. And the 15.5 is a four by one and a half inch. And of course I could write it like this, or I could write it like four times four times one and a half inch. They're both going to mean the same thing when I'm looking at it in terms of this junction box. And now we know the smallest round slash octagonal box for these conductors. Thanks for watching this video. If you did enjoy this video, give it a thumbs up. Share this with someone else who might find this helpful or maybe on your social media if you have people following you that are into this kind of stuff. Let me know how you did in the comments and let me know if you have any questions or comments on the video. If you do want to personally contact me, contact me at this email here. And until next time, take care. Goodbye.